Pirelli make top-end bike tyres, but also make tyres for a wide range of high-performance applications, including Formula One. Look at these! And they've been making rubber for over 150 years. We've come to their HQ and factory in Milan to not only show you how top-end bike tyres are made, but also how they use their engineering expertise from motorsport. Tyres are surprisingly complicated, whether they're for Formula One or for bikes, and I can't wait to show you why. But here is also where they make the latest prototypes and do all the research and development. And at a race recently at Strada Bianchi, I saw there were some prototype tyres being used. So I'm going to see if I can find them. But first, some history, because Pirelli is over 152 years old and has sites all over the world. Their main HQ is in Milan, but just next to Milan is a small town called Bellate, where this factory is located. Now, it was opened in the 1960s and first made rubber mats and automotive tyres. But in 2020, it was converted into a bike tyre factory. And through clever engineering and automation, it's able to still make bike tyres here today and remain competitive. They've got some of their history and heritage on display here. I love these old retro posters. They're just, oh, they're really cool. And Pirelli's heritage in motorsport is well known, but what's perhaps less well known is their heritage in cycling. So I think it's a little known fact that they were actually making tubular tires in the 1950s for none other than Fausto Coppi. How cool is that? Before I show you the, the new machines, they've got some of the older ones that were in this factory originally. And they've also got some car tires over here. So the manufacturing of the high-end car tires happens in Turin, but there's still some processes that are happening here. But this serves to highlight something, which is Pirelli's automotive expertise in, in performance tires. You know, they're very specialist in making small batch uh, runs of specialist tires for specific high performance cars. So for example, these are P0 courses. Look how wide they are, they're like 285s. We're out of car zone and onto the first step. So the first thing they do is get the material that's going to make up the parts of the tires and they have to cut it to length. Now this is done on these CNC profilers behind me. This is important for a couple of reasons. First, it's more accurate than a human, but also it minimizes human contact with the material. Now that's important because this material hasn't been vulcanized yet. More on that later, but as a result, it's really delicate, it's really thin being parts for a tire, and it's very sticky. Look, it's just sticking to itself. Some of the other bits that are being cut to length are the puncture breaker. That's what's on this uh, roll. This is the speed core, which is used in tubeless tires. It helps keep them airtight as a special layer. And this uh, thinner layer here is for the bead on the tire to help reinforce it and protect it. But all these bits will come together later. One of the noticeable things though is just how this factory is just a lot less smelly than other tire places I've visited in the past. And just, I don't know, a lot more automated. The next step is all about the tread. The chemical composition of the tread is crucial for performance and a closely guarded secret. But Pirelli has a whole lab dedicated to optimizing rubber to minimize hysteresis losses while maintaining grip. And he's able to use F1 expertise from Formula One into its bike tires, which I think we can call trickle down. But there's a problem. These exotic motorsport compounds can be fantastic, but they're often very sticky and delicate, especially before they've been vulcanized. And as a result, the engineers spend just as much time developing this. This supporting layer is known as a service liner. Think of it as a sort of specialist conveyor belt. And it's something that's, well, not especially sexy, but it's super, super important because Without this, they couldn't make the tires using specialist compounds. It needs to have enough friction so that it pulls the tire tread compound along, which is very delicate, but not too much friction that causes it to stick, which could then damage it, cause it to stretch, or just jam up the machine. 
To add further complication, it's climate dependent as well. So this carrier has to be changed to depending on the climate and where the, the factory is situated in the world. And by sort of mastering the material properties of these carriers, Pirelli are able to handle, well, super exotic specialist tread compounds. The top secret rubber tread compounds are made by Pirelli, although they're not done here. They're done at two other plants, one in Turin and one in Romania, and then they're shipped here. And it comes in these big boxes like this, and it's all, well, it's dead chunky. Anyway, it gets fed into this machine behind me, which is an extruder, and that draws it out and makes it nice and thin and tread shaped. We now move on to the assembly and it's really fast. It's done in one step by this machine. We can't show you everything because there are some industrial secrets going on, but the tire carcass, bead and other components are combined together. Next step is my favorite step because it's where the, well, the cool Pirelli P0 graphics are applied onto the sidewall of the tire and it's, just, well, a smaller version of the same tech that's used to apply the graphics onto the Formula One tires you might have seen. Uh, it's really cool, but they're also applying a barcode onto the tires. Now this is so that they can trace all the tires and, well, track what happens to them and where they go. Now that might sound not too exciting, but it's really important for a couple of reasons. First, it means that they know exactly when a tire was made and what batch it was in and what rubber it was used and everything can be traced. Mm -hmm. But also, if a professional rider like Mads Pedersen wins a race on a Pirelli tire, they can track down the exact person that made that tire and then Mads Pedersen can come here and shake their hand, which I think is absolutely awesome. And that is something that they do here in the factory. Vulcanization has been around since 1839, where it was invented by an alien called Spock from the planet Vulcan. That may not be true, but what is true is that it's a process of strengthening and reinforcing rubbers through a polymerization reaction where you subject them to heat and pressure in the presence of sulfur. So natural rubber is a, well, it's a natural polymer. It just exists as long chains of, of carbon atoms, but they're not joined together or, or cross-linked. And so it can be very strong in some directions, but a lot weaker in others. So if you look at this piece of tire ply that hasn't been vulcanized, I can tear it along a plane and it just shears apart because it doesn't have that cross-linking. So what vulcanization does is it uses sulfur to cross-link all of the chains together to make the rubber a lot harder and stiffer and more durable. But this is where the, the motorsport expertise comes in because you, you have to fine-tune it, you have to get the right balance because too much vulcanization and you make the rubber too stiff and um, therefore it can just crack and it's too harsh and too hard but not enough and the tire is too delicate and too supple and it will be slow it's all about getting the right balance and well to help them do that even better Pirelli have got a load of rather sophisticated robots in there that um, I can't really show you so these are the tires just as they've come out of the machine and as they do, each one is quality control inspected by a human uh, to determine that it's all right. As part of that process, they weigh every single tire as well. And it's just incredible how b before it went in, it was all floppy. And now, I mean, it's just really, it's really hard. Um, but the other cool thing is that the vulcanization uh, curing process also applies the shape, the tread to the tire, and the imprinted graphics on the side. So you can see this one is a 28 uh, C tire and um, it's got all the other little numbers and stuff on it as well. Ah, oh, proper good. Oh, and by the way, operators aren't normally allowed to handle tires with bare hands, but I was allowed to for the purposes of this video. I've just found this bin. Look what it's got in it. Prototype. So I've, I've asked the guys and apparently these are some well, top secret prototype tires that are being used by Lidl Trek right now. Although they've not told me any of the details on them, there's something coming. Oh, that's proper cool. But that's not all, because you're probably wondering how Pirelli develops its top secret tire compounds, how it measures puncture protection, rolling resistance and grip. Well, I am too. So I'm going to go to Pirelli's lab where they do 
all of that stuff over in Milan and make a video about it. So make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss that one as it's coming. But in the meantime, I'm going to steal a pair of these prototype tires and um, go get a pizza. Love you. Bye. <laughs>